everyone, welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy. All you do is copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now we always start in the same way and that's by sitting on our bottoms, crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our hearts and saying our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There. Now, as you can see, I'm in a rather spooky, mysterious place. I'm wearing a black outfit and some round glasses because today we're doing a special story based on J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Let's get started. We meet Harry, aged 10, living in a house. Coming up to stand, take your feet wide, arms out and above your head. House pose. Harry lives at number four Privet Drive with his uncle Vernon and aunt Petunia and his horrid bullying cousin Dudley Dursley. Now, Harry always tries to keep as quiet as a mouse. Coming down to your knees, everybody, and tuck yourself up into a tiny little mouse pose. He stays in his tiny little bedroom, which is in fact the cupboard under the stairs. Coming up to see. Now, on Harry's 11th birthday, the moon is in the sky. Coming up to stand, join your feet together and your hands together above your head and take yourself over to one side, making a moon pose. And over to the other way, making another moon pose or a banana. When the clock strikes midnight, pointing all the way up to 12. Dong. All of a sudden, a giant called Hagrid clomps in through the door. Jump your feet wide, folding forwards, take hold of your ankles and clomp, 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 clomp. He straightens up as he tells Harry, you are a wizard. A wizard? Turning one foot to the side, one foot back and bend your knee. Stretch your arms out wide and lift your arm up to the sky, coming into a wizard pose. I'm not a wizard, says Harry. Taking your arms down again, straighten your leg and turn to the other side, bending your knee, coming into a wizard pose on the other side. I'm just Harry. Hagrid stands up and says, no, and you've been accepted into the Hogwarts School of Wizarding and Witchcraft. <gasps> Arms wide, hands above your head, coming into school pose. Now, before Harry starts school, he needs to go shopping to get some stuff. Things like a uniform and a pencil case. Oh, and a wand. <laughs> Hagrid takes Harry on his magic flying motorcycle. Taking yourself halfway forwards, take your handlebars. Here we go. <laughs> they come to a stop at Diagon Alley, which is a secret hidden magic shopping street in the middle of London. This is where all the witches and wizards buy their things. Coming to stand at the side, Harry has to take big steps to keep up with Hagrid. Big step. Now Hagrid tells Harry that he's in, he's in fact famous amongst wizards and witches, known as the boy who lived. Step all the way back and all the way forwards on the other leg. Big step. That's because Lord Voldemort killed Harry's parents when he was a baby, but couldn't kill Harry for some strange magical reason. Step all the way back and step forward on the other leg. Big step. And Harry is in fact rather rich because his parents left him lots of money on deposit at the Gringotts Wizarding Bank, which is where they are now for Harry to withdraw some money. Coming up to stand. Gringotts Wizarding Bank is run by goblins. Squatting all the way down. These are rather little menacing looking fellows with long pointy noses and long pointy ears and long fingernails and sharp nails. Ooh. The goblins show Harry to his vault, which is a bit like a ginormous treasure chest. Sitting on your bottom, join the soles of your feet together, holding onto your toes, and take your head down towards your feet. 
they open up the vault with a golden key. Inside is lots and lots of money, loads of gold coins, plenty for Harry to buy the things he needs for school. They also go to another vault where Hagrid takes out a stone-shaped parcel and says, Official Hogwarts business, Harry. Pay no attention to this. <clears throat> hmm, funny, Harry thinks. But now he can go buy his things, so he heads to the wand shop. Coming up onto your knees, take your foot out to the side and your hand up to the sky. Now open up the wand shop door. And come back to two knees again. Take your other leg to the other side, your hand up to the sky, and close the wand shop door. Inside, Harry gets to try all of the wands. He gets into his wand pose, taking one foot forward, one foot back. Take your arm out and swish over here and jump your feet the other way and swish over there. But the wand that suits Harry best is in fact the twin of Lord Voldemort's. It contains a feather from the same phoenix. A phoenix is a magical bird with a plume of fiery red feathers. Coming up to stand and face the side, take your arm up to the sky and your hand to the side. Now see if you can catch your foot in your hand, showing off your very special phoenix. Now let's see if we can kick our foot into our hand, coming into our dancer pose to show off our fiery red plume. Well done, everyone! And coming up to stand. Let's try that on the other side. Turning to the other side now, reach your arm to the sky, your hand to the side, and see if you can catch your foot. Now, kick, kick, kick your foot into your hand, coming into your beautiful fiery phoenix dancer pose. Yay! Well done, everyone! Coming up to stand. Now Hagrid very kindly buys Harry a present for his 11th birthday. A beautiful, pure white, snowy owl called Hedwig. Come down to your knees, take your hands down in between, and we go to it, to, and again, to it, to. Very good, everyone. It's the first day of school, and Harry arrives at King's Cross Railway Station to catch the Hogwarts Express from platform nine and three quarters. Harry puts his hands on his hips and looks over one shoulder. Hmm, where could platform nine and three quarters be as he looks over the other shoulder? And the first and the second? He has no idea where platform nine and three quarters is. Then he spies through his little round glasses, joining your thumbs and fingers together. Have a look through. The Weasley family, and they're obviously going to the same train as he is. He asks them to show him the way, and they tell him he has to jump through a magical wall. Crouching all the way down onto your tippy toes. After three, let's do a big jump through the magic wall. Ready? One, two, Three, whoosh! Wow, Harry made it! On the other side is the Hogwarts Express, the train. Jump your feet together, let's go! Clickety-clack, clickety-clack, here we go around the track. Clickety-clack, clickety-clack, here we go around the track. On the train, Harry makes friends with Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger. They soon arrive at Hogwarts. Toot! Toot. All of the children are taken to the Great Hall at Hogwarts School, where the long tables are set. Sitting down on your bottom, feet flat, knees bent, hands behind you. Lift up your bottom, making yourself into a big, long table. Everyone takes a seat in a chair. Coming up to stand, lift your arms up to the sky and bend your knees, sitting down in your chair pose. Harry, Ron, Hermione and the rest of the first years need to be told which house they are in before they can eat. So they need to try on the sorting hat. Jump your feet wide, hands above your head, making a nice pointy sorting hat shape. Now, there are four houses at Hogwarts School. There's Gryffindor, 
the lion coming down to your knees. After three, lion pose. Ready? One, two, three. There's Hufflepuff, which has the symbol of a badger. Take your hands forward, tuck your toes, and walk your hands back so that you're crouching and balancing like a little badger with pointy paws and a pointy nose. Hufflepuff. There's also a Slytherin, which has the symbol of a snake. Yes, well done, everyone. Come down onto your bellies, hands underneath your shoulders, and wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> like a Slytherin snake. And lastly, there's Ravenclaw, which is the symbol of an eagle, coming into eagle pose. Up we come to stand, cross one leg over the other and bend your knees. Arms out wide, swizzle those arms so one's under the other and wave with your underneath arm. Twizzle them round to hold your palms and sit yourself down like an eagle. Ah, ah! Now I'd like to know which house you're in. Let's play a game. I'll twinkle my fingers like this, like I'm wearing the sorting hat, and I'll say a special rhyme. And then I'd like you to show me which house you're in by doing the yoga pose. Will you be in Gryffindor with the lion? Will you be in Hufflepuff with the badger? Will you be in Slytherin with the snake? Or will you be in Ravenclaw with the eagle. Let's see. Ready, everyone? Sorting hat, sorting hat. Which house are you? <gasps> wow, I can see all sorts of houses. Some of you are in Gryffindor, lion pose, yes. Some of you are in Ravenclaw. I can see you're doing eagle, well done. Some of you are in snake. Look, you're doing snake. That means you're in Slytherin. Ooh. And some of you are in Hufflepuff with your very clever badgers. Well done, everyone. Now, coming up to stand, twinkle your fingers on your head as Harry, Ron and Hermione wait to be told what house they're in. And it is... <laughs> Gryffindor! Lion pose, coming down to your knees. After three, one, two, three. <laughs> Very good, everyone. Now, at Hogwarts, they have some rather funny lessons. They have potions with Professor Severus Snape coming onto your tummies to make a cauldron. Here we go, onto your bellies. Take your feet towards your bottom. See if you can grab one ankle and another ankle, and then breathe in as you lift up into a cauldron shape. Well done, everybody. Now, coming all the way up again to sit with your feet nice and wide, because into that cauldron they have to mix lots and lots of bubbly potions. Take hold of one of your stirring sticks, and we go bubble, 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 potion. And the other way, let's take the other stick now. Bubble, 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 potion. Take your leg to the other side. In the sports field, they have broomstick flying lessons. Coming up to stand. Let's do our flying pose, ready? Standing nice and strong, take your arms out wide. Lift up one of your legs, oh, trying not to wobble. And take your foot out back behind you, making yourself into your flying pose. Broomstick flying, woohoo! And standing nice and tall. Now, Harry is very good at broomstick flying, so good that he gets chosen to be the new seeker on the Quidditch team for Gryffindor. <laughs> Let's try our flying pose on the other side and see what it's like playing Quidditch. Coming to the other side, arms wide, see if you can balance on your one leg and then take that leg all the way back behind you into your flying pose, nice and strong, woohoo! And stepping back, well done everyone. Everyone. Now, one night, Harry, Ron and Hermione are climbing the stairs back to Gryffindor's quarters. Up we go, up we go, up we, up we, up we go. When all of a sudden, the stairs change direction. They keep climbing. Up we go, up we go, up we, up we, up we go and they end up in a part of the school they're really not supposed to be in. 
they come across a large three-headed dog. Ah! Coming down to your knees, take your hands down, tuck your toes, press your bottom up to the sky, coming into your dog pose. Now, I did say it was a three-headed dog, so let's lift up one of our legs and waggle it around. Ah! Coming up to stand, everyone. Harry, Ron and Hermione, run, run! And they hide, tucking themselves up into small little hiding balls. Oh, that was one scary guard dog. They sit up. What on earth could it have been guarding, they wonder? Hmm, Harry wonders whether it had something to do with that parcel Hagrid got out of the vault back at the Gringotts Bank. We'll see. Let's go and ask Hagrid, they think, who lives in the Forbidden Forest. Coming up to stand, the Forbidden Forest is full of menacing-looking trees. Bring one foot on top of the other and your hands together at your heart. Now grow your tree up nice and tall. Ooh, now, I wonder if you can do a really nice, menacing, scary face for me. Very good. Let's try another one on the other side. Bringing your other foot on top now, your hands together at your heart again. Grow up nice and tall. And another nice, scary face. Very good, everyone. They find Hagrid's hut. Jump your feet wide, hands up tall. Where they find him tending to a large golden egg. Hmm. Sitting on your bottoms, hug your knees into your chest. Now, see if you can just lift your toes off of the ground and balance like a little cosmic egg. Well done. All of a sudden, the egg hatches. And out pops a baby dragon. Oh, coming up onto one knee, everyone. One knee forward, one knee back. You can keep your toes tucked behind you if it helps. And then crisscross your thumbs, lifting them up and above your head. And let's do a baby lion face. Ready? <laughs> Very good. Can we swap sides? Taking your knee down and swapping your sides. Ready? Oh, Hagrid's fallen in love with this little baby dragon. He calls him Norbert. Oh, very sweet. Now, Harry asks about this guard dog. What was it doing? What was it guarding? Hagrid says, well, oh, that's just Fluffy. Fluffy's no trouble. He'll go to sleep if you play music. Oh, we well, shouldn't have said that. Ah, so Hagrid knows something about this guard dog, but he's not ready to tell Harry what he's guarding. At least Harry now knows how to make him fall asleep. It's Christmas, and for the first time in Harry's life, he receives a Christmas present. It's a beautiful cloak, and the note says that it used to belong to his father. Harry tries it on. Coming up high onto your knees, take your arms wide. Now wrap yourself up in that beautiful cloak. <gasps> Harry notices that when he does this, his whole body disappears. <gasps> It's an invisibility cloak. Cool, this is a brilliant present and could be very, very useful. It's back to being at school and Harry, Ron and Hermione are in the library studying some books. Sitting on your bottom, bend your knees and open your knees, making a book shape. They're trying to find out what that stone was and maybe it's got something to do with Fluffy the guard dog. <gasps> Hermione, who's very good at studying books, finds something. The Philosopher's Stone. It contains the elixir of life. Elixir of life means that you're immortal and that you'll never die. Harry and Ron do know this, but Harry realises, yes, that must be what is being hidden at the school to protect it from Lord Voldemort, who wants it more than anything so that he can regain his health, take his power back and finish off Harry once and for all. Harry knows that he must get to it before Lord Voldemort does. And luckily, he has his friends, Ron and Hermione, to help him. That night, they take cover beneath the cloak. Standing up, jump your feet wide, arms wide. Start to spin yourself as you cover yourself with that brilliant invisibility cloak. Then the three of them start to tiptoe, tiptoe quietly, 
so as not to make a sound while they're invisible, to that room where Fluffy the guard dog is. Coming down to your knees, hands down, tuck your toes, lift your bottom up to the sky. Remember, Fluffy's a three-headed dog, so lift up one of your legs and waggle it around. Rawr! But Harry knows music will send it to sleep. So he plays a little tune on a flute. Standing up, cross one leg over the other and take your hands to the side and play your little tune on your flute. And let's go the other way. Cross, the hand, cross your feet the other way and take your hands to the side and play your flute on the other side. Very nice. Fluffy seems to go to sleep, coming down to your knees, oh, all the way down with your head. Harry, Ron and Hermione take this opportunity to open up the trapdoor in the floor that Fluffy has been guarding. Standing up, legs wide, Crisscross your fingers behind your back and stretch your arms out, folding all the way forwards to open up the trap door. Ready? One, two, three, fold! They stand up and they jump down into the trap door. Ready? One, two, three, boom, boom. They land on their backs, rolling all the way down but they've landed in a giant plant, a plant called Devil's Snare. It starts to coil itself around their legs, around their arms. Oh no, it's trapped them. Luckily, Hermione, who pays attention in her herbology classes, knows that the way to release from this plant is to relax. They try it. <sighs> sure enough, it works, and they're free. Yes, coming up to stand. They're in the next room, but they're faced with a life-sized game of wizarding chess, where all the pieces come to life. Jump your feet together. There's a bishop, hands at your heart, who's bowing backwards and forwards, singing ooh boo bee doo boo dee there's a knight as well. Take one foot forward, one foot back, and clasp your hands forward as we go charge, like a knight. There's also a castle piece. Turning your feet to the front, take your arms out wide, hands above your head, coming into your castle pose. Now, luckily, Ron is rather good at chess, so he takes the lead in this game, and he does really well. He leaves the coast clear for Harry to continue alone. Harry goes through a tunnel. Coming down to your knees, hands down, tuck your toes, lift your bottom to the sky. He walks his feet forwards and he comes up to stand slowly to find himself facing a giant magical mirror. He stands as still as a mountain, looking at his reflection. In this mirror, you see whatever you desire. And all of a sudden, Harry sees the Philosopher's Stone drop into his pocket. It's worked. But at that very same moment, Lord Voldemort comes into the room in disguise as one of Harry's professors. He tries to grab the stone off Harry. Take one foot forward, one foot back, stretch your arms and reach forward like Lord Voldemort. Give it to me! Harry pulls all the way back. No! Voldemort chases Harry all around the room and he reaches again for it. Give it to me! Harry grabs his hand and as he does, the hand begins to burn and disintegrate into dust. Harry takes hold of Voldemort's head and all of a sudden Voldemort's head starts to disintegrate into dust until his whole body turns into one big pile of rubble. Harry's natural magic has done it again. He's defeated Lord Voldemort and he has the Philosopher's Stone in his care. 
but he is exhausted and he takes himself to the hospital wing where a lovely cozy bed is waiting for him. Sitting on your bottoms, feet flat, knees bent, hands pointing towards your bottom and lift yourself up into your bed shape. Ah, oh, Harry sinks down into the bed. He stretches his legs forwards and he folds all the way forwards to take hold of the blankets. He brings them up over his body as he gets himself lying down and comfy in this beautiful, comfortable bed. He takes rest. And just like Harry, we also take rest to regain our strength. That amazing special magic that Harry has, we all have it. It's called love. And that love is the most powerful thing of all. It will defeat and overcome all darkness. And it lives in each of every one of us. And while we channel and share that love, the world, whether it's a magical one or not, will become a more beautiful place, full of wonder and light and warmth. So we breathe into that love now that sits in our body and our hearts. Deep breathing to let it spread all around. It makes us feel so peaceful. So with that love and with that peace, we slowly bring ourselves back, wiggling our toes and our fingers bringing our knees up to our chest and giving them a hug. We roll over onto our side and we slowly come up to sit, back to where we started, with our hands together at our hearts. And we finish just the way we started with our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. Well done, everyone. Thanks for coming on the Harry Potter yoga adventure with me. That was great fun. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you soon for another Cosmic Kids adventure. Bye bye. Welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy. Just copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now we always start in the same way and that's by sitting on our bottoms and crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our hearts and saying our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There, now we're ready to begin. So let's take a look through our cosminoculars and find out who our story's about today. Joining your thumbs and fingers together, have a look through. <gasps> Ooh, stunning shapes. Look at the spirally colours. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, look, can you see it? Can you see the picture? It's a it's Mimi the mermaid. What's Mimi doing? She's doing yoga. She's doing bowl pose. How exciting, Mimi the mermaid. Now, we're having a birthday party very soon and we've invited Mimi the mermaid to come. But as you can tell, that could be quite tricky as she has a fish tail. She doesn't have any legs, but Mimi has told us about a sea witch who can give her a special potion which will give her magic party legs. Yes, we're going to go and find Mimi and help her get that potion. Oh, and meet that witch. Now, we're not sure about witches. They make us feel a little scared sometimes, a funny feeling called fear. But this is a good chance for us to feel that feeling and see if we can use our yoga powers to make it better. Come on, let's go. We need to get ready for some swimming. So we come into our cat pose. Coming onto all fours. 
We keep our toes tucked and we arch our back up looking into our belly button. Then we dip our belly down and we wiggle waggle our tails. Now we come into our dog pose, lifting our bottoms up to the sky, stretching ourselves, walking our hands forward a little bit and coming into a very nice doggy pose. Woof, 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 woof. We drop down onto our knees and we tuck ourselves all the way back into a tiny little mouse pose. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Then we sit up and we sit on our bottoms hugging our knees into our chest and we rock and we roll. Ready? Remember, tuck your chin in, squash a tomato under it so you don't bonk your head. Ready? Whoop. Very good everyone. We turn to the front, join the soles of our feet together, hold onto our toes and flutter our knees up and down like a butterfly. Very good everyone. Now, we need to pack a bag with some things in it. So we take our legs out long in front of us and bending our knees a little bit to touch our toes. We open up our bag, Ooh, lifting our arms up. We take our arms to the side and we twist all the way one way. Hmm. Now I think we should pack some of our special birthday cupcakes. We grab a load of them and we plop them in. Plop, 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 plop. Oh, lovely birthday cupcakes. We made loads. Take your arms out wide again. Twist the other way. I think we should get some more birthday cupcakes. We can never have too many. Let's get them and plop them in. Plop, 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 plop. Plop, 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 plop. Brilliant. We've got a whole bag full of birthday cupcakes. We lift our arms up to the sky, bend our knees a little bit and close our bag. Very good. Now we need to go so we come up to our knees and we take our arms wide and we give everyone at home a great big hug. Bye! Oh, look, we're going to take a hot air balloon all the way to the beach. Let's blow it up. Bringing your hands around your mouth, give it a big blow. floating up really high now. Wow! Now, I think we're going to land any minute. Yes, we are. We're going to land at the beach. We need to get into our landing positions. Coming onto your knees, everyone, and tuck yourself up into a landing ball. Ooh. We sit up. We're here at the beach, ready to find Mimi. We need to climb over those big sand dunes, though. So we stand up and we take big steps. Ready? Big step. And another one. Take it back. Here we go. Big step. Very good, everyone. <gasps> On the beach is a whole waddle of penguins. Joining your heels together, your toes out wide, take your wings to the side like a little penguin. We waddle around with the penguins, having a little chat. Oh, hello. Nice to meet you. Yes, hello. Nice to meet you too. Hello. Oh, we can't be chatting all day, can we? We've got to go and find Mimi. Let's look through our sea goggles and see where she is. Thumbs and fingers together. Have a look through. Oh, there she is. She's on the rocks out in the water. Quick, grab a surfboard and start to run. Run, run, run into the waves. Run, run, run into the waves. We put our surfboard down onto the water and we lie on it on our bellies. Then we start to swim, paddling out to the waves where we're going to do some surfing. Shall we do it now? OK, come up onto all fours, everyone, and step one foot forward, one foot back, and cartwheel your arms round. We're surfing! <laughs> Jump your feet the other way. Let's do it backwards. Woo! Yay! <laughs> Here's Mimi! on the rocks. Sitting on your bottoms, take your bottom to the side and swish your tail around to one side. Mimi puts a hand on her fishy knee, puts her other hand behind her, looks over her shoulder, looks back at us and she says, ooh la la. 
Then she swishes her tail around the other way. She puts her hand on her fishy knee again, her other hand behind her, looks over her shoulder, looks back at us and says, Oh la la, I am so glad you are here. I have a list from Goody Gumdrops, the sea witch. We have to find some things for the magic party legs potion. Please, I need your help. We can help. Let's take a look at that list. Huh. Number one, football of crab. Oh, we know that crabs play football, don't we? Let's go and find them. We stand up and we take our arms up high and we dive into the water. Sploosh. We jump our feet back and come onto our bellies where we swim through the water, following Mimi the mermaid. Oh, we're going through a tunnel. Tuck your toes, hands underneath your shoulders, press yourself up and back, going through the tunnel. Look, there's a little sea snake. Let's be careful of him coming down onto your bellies. We tuck ourselves back as we've reached the rocks where the crabs live. And guess what? The crabs are playing football. We join in. Sitting on your bottoms, bend your knees, feet flat, hands pointing towards your bottom. Lift yourself up and let's digger, digger over here. Ready? Digger, 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 digger. Oh, other way. Digger, 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 digger. We sit and we have a lot of fun playing with the crabs, but we really need their football. We have an idea. Would it be okay if we have your football and in return, we're going to give you lots and lots of birthday cupcakes? The crabs think this is the best thing ever. And we say namaste to thank them. One, two, three. Namaste. The last thing on the list is coconut of monkey. We know what monkeys are and we know that they love coconuts, but we're going to need to get to the beach and we're going to need to get there fast. Mimi has an idea. Taking your legs in front of you, separate your fin tail. Mimi picks up one of her telefins and she dials a number. Hello, is that the popcorn, the dolphin? Ah, oui, yes, it's uh, Mimi the Mermaid. Uh, would you have, uh, have time to come down here and uh, help me take the cosmic kids to the beach? I have to get coconut of a monkey. Oui. I'll see you in a moment. Ah, oui. Au revoir. Ciao. She puts down the telephone and then realises something. She needs to ring back. So she picks up the other telephone and she dials the number again. <laughs> Popcorn? Yeah, I need you to bring uh, more than one dolphin. A pod. pod of dolphins. Many cosmic kids need to come. Oui? Yeah, oui. we'll see you in a moment. Ah oui, au revoir. Ciao, bye. She puts down the telephone, and before we know it, popcorn, along with a whole pod of dolphins, have come to take us to the beach. Yay! Coming onto your knees, everyone. And crisscross your fingers. Drop down onto your elbows and let's make our dolphin clicky noises as we dive through the ocean. Ready? <laughs> we get to the beach fast. And when we get there, we stand in a little squat on the back of our dolphin so we can just poke our head out of the water and see the monkeys on the beach. We give them a wave. Put one hand forward, lift your other hand and wave. And the other way, hand down, lift it up, wave. The monkeys are going to throw us one of their coconuts, so we're going to need to jump up really high to catch it. Ready? Up high on your toes. One, two, three, jump! Yes, we've caught one of the coconuts. We come all the way down and we put it in our special waterproof backpack. We've done it. Now, it's time for us to go to the cave, the cave where Goody Gumdrops the sea witch is. Ooh, we feel that funny feeling again, that fear, but we're going to be brave. We're going to do some breathing as we swim down. Come to your knees, hands down the middle, breathing in. As we breathe, we feel calmer. 
and we get closer to the cave. There it is in front of us. Standing with your feet wide, take your hands above your head. <gasps> Guarding the mouth of the cave is a wobbygong, a carpet shark. Let's come down to our bellies and crisscross our fingers behind our back. Lift up your shark fin. Wobbygong is lolling from side to side. Lolling, 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 lolling. <gasps> We're not sure about Wobby Gong, but we swim towards him. And as we do, we have a rather brilliant idea. We get close to him, we put our hands under our shoulders, we roll our shoulders back, we look at him and we say, hello, would you like a birthday cupcake? <coughs> Wobby Gong looks rather, rather surprised coming back down. Crisscross your fingers, lift up your shark fin. No, no one's ever offered me something so nice before. I, I, I'd, I'd love, I'd love a birthday cupcake. Yes, yes, please. We tuck our toes, lift our bottoms to the sky, happy that we can make this little wish come true, and we jump our feet into cross-legged. One, two, three, boing. We give the Wobby Gong our special birthday cupcake, and he's delighted. Yes, we did it. Time to tiptoe into the cave. Up we come, everyone. Tiptoe very quietly. Somewhere in here is Goody Gumdrops, the sea wi There she is, standing in front of us. And we stand as still as mountains. We twinkle our fingers on our heads and our faces, noticing the sensations in our body as we feel this funny feeling called fear. We breathe with it, trying to calm ourselves. And as we do, we look at Goody Gomtrops and we see her just as she is, with her craggy fingers standing on one leg. And she doesn't seem to have any teeth. So that must be why she's called Goody Gumdrops. Oh, welcome, Cosmic Kids and Mimi the Mermaid. Have you got those things I needed for the Magic Party Legs potion? Come on, pop them in my oyster shell cauldron. Sure enough, in front of her is an oyster shell cauldron. Sitting on your bottoms, join the soles of your feet together and hold onto your toes. There's already something bubbling away inside it. Bubble, 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 bubble. Come on, first thing we've got to put in there, Football of crab. Do you remember the crab's move? Let's do it. Bend your knees, feet flat, hands behind you. Lift yourself up. Let's dig a digger, ooh, that football into that cauldron. Digger, 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 digger. Woo! And the other way. Digger, 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 digger. Woo! Coming back into your cauldron, your oyster shell pose. Joining the soles of your feet together, holding your toes. After we put the football in, it bubbles even more. Bubble, 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 bubble. It's getting all the more bubbly at all the moments pass. Now the last thing that we need to put in, can you remember? Yes, coconut of monkey. Let's roll it in. Tucking yourself up, remember, squash that tomato under your chin so you don't bonk your head as we rock and roll and rock and roll our coconut into the cauldron joining the soles of your feet together here we go again bubble 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 goody gumdrops the witch spreads her legs wide around the cauldron she then takes a piece of driftwood and she stirs it stir it stir it stir it and then using another piece of driftwood she stirs it again stir it stir it stir it she puts that down and then crosses her legs closes her eyes and mutters some magical spells <laughs> Her eyes pop open. It's ready. <gasps> Mimi's time has come. She comes up high onto her tail, hoping that this is going to work. Now she takes a cup of the potion from Goody Gumdrops and she starts to drink. Mm. 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 
All of a sudden, her fingers start to twinkle. Ooh, her body starts to sway a little bit. And then, all of a sudden, one foot steps forward. And a whole leg. It's halfway worked, but what about the other one? Let's see. Whoop. It's worked. Two feet, two legs. Magic party legs. Mimi gets her balance wobbling around a little bit to try and find her feet. Then she does a big smile. She's so excited she can come to the party now. Yes, she can do it. Now, Goody Gumdrops gives Mimi a package. It's a parcel. And inside you'll find some special party clothes and a starfish. Because when you want to come home, Mimi, and you need your fishy tail back, you just make a wish to the starfish. How cool is that? A wish to a starfish. But we'd better go. Nearly time for our party. Luckily, Popcorn the Dolphin's going to take us. Coming down to your knees again, crisscross your fingers, and let's come down onto our elbows. Ready? <laughs> We get all the way back to the beach and head out where all the penguins are still waddling about. Standing up, join the heels together, your toes are out, and waddle around. Waddle, 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 waddle. When they see Mimi, though, coming out of the water, they stop. They've never seen a mermaid with legs before. Mimi wiggles into her party clothes. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. She's ready. Now all we need to do is get back into our hot air balloon and get back, crossing her legs. Take your hands around your mouth and blow it up. Ready? We're going up really high. Mimi's looking great. We're really excited about our birthday party now, aren't we? But it might be a good idea for us just to take a few moments, just to rest a while. So we lie ourselves back, letting the hot air balloon take us all the way home. Mimi rests too. And as we lie back, we feel grateful that our friend Mimi has done this for us to come to our birthday party. What a special friend. We also think about all those feelings we felt as we thought about meeting Goody Gumdrops, the sea witch. Sometimes we can feel something called fear. We feel scared and we want to run away. And that's a good thing, it's the right feeling. But other times it's good just to take a moment to breathe, and notice what happens when you calm down. Is it still fear, or does it go away? This is one of the magic things about breathing, about yoga, is that it helps us feel all calm and clear-headed, so that when some of these feelings crop up, like fear or anger, we can take a moment just to help them calm down by breathing. We breathe now and notice how peaceful we feel. And we're going to take this peace into the rest of our day. So we wiggle our fingers and our toes. We stretch up, making ourselves long like a big piece of spaghetti. And then we hug our knees into our chest, giving ourselves a special moment. We roll over onto our side and we come up to sit, crossing our legs, feeling clear and peaceful. We bring our hands together at our hearts and we say a very calm and happy namaste. Ready after three, one, two, Three. Namaste.
Well done, everyone. Thanks for coming to the ocean with me and for helping Mimi the mermaid get her magic party legs potion. We're going to have a great time at the party now. I'll see you soon for a Cosmic Kids adventure. Bye-bye. Welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy. Just copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now we always begin in the same way and that's by sitting on our bottoms, crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our hearts and saying our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There, now we're ready to begin. So let's have a look through the cosmonoculars and find out who we're meeting today. Joining your thumbs and fingers together, have a look through. Ooh, look at the colours spinning around and the patterns. Ooh, ooh, can you see that? Oh my goodness, it's... It's Ruby Broom! What's Ruby doing? She's doing yoga. Ruby's doing crow pose. Cool. Wow, this is exciting. Today we have a special Halloween story. Ruby Broom is a little girl with a difference. She and her family are in fact witches and wizards. <laughs> so Halloween is a rather special time for them. Now Ruby is nine years old and she lives with her mum, her dad, her pet dog Pickles in a lovely house. Coming up to stand in house pose. Taking your feet wide, your arms wide and bring them up above your head. Now Ruby's pet dog Pickles is a magic dog. Let's come into dog pose. Down onto your hands and your knees. Tuck your toes and lift your hips up to the sky and let's woof like a dog. Woof, 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 woof. Now lift up one of your legs and give it a wag like you're wagging your tail. When Pickles does this, lots of treats fall out of the sky. Woof, 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 woof. And lowering your leg back down and lift your other leg up and wag it the other way. When he wags it the other way, lots of balls fall from the sky. Woof, 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 woof and lowering your leg all the way down and coming down to your knees. Now Ruby's mum loves whizzing around on her broomstick. Let's come into broomstick pose. Lying on our tummies everyone, taking your arms down by your sides. And after three, let's lift up our legs, our arms and our chest. Ready? One, two, three, whoosh! Like a broomstick, woohoo! Coming up to sit with your legs crossed. Now Ruby's mum is very good at keeping the house absolutely spotlessly clean and she never lifts a finger. All she does is mutter a spell. She twitches her nose and she does a big blow all over the house. <gasps> and the whole place is spick and span. Hm. Now Ruby's dad, being a wizard, loves spinning around in his cape. Coming up to stand, everyone, taking your feet wide and your arms wide. Now begin to spin. He loves doing this, and when he closes his eyes and he spins, the lawn magically cuts itself. Cool! And bringing yourself to stop. Now Ruby has also been practicing her magic. Recently she's been turning everyday objects into animals, like the lamp for example. Coming into lamp pose, bringing your feet together and turning your toes out. Now take your arms wide and bring your fingers up above your head to touch, like you've got a lampshade for a head, yes. She managed to turn the lamp into a frog. Let's come into frog pose. Bending your knees all the way down and using your fingers for balance. Let's do a one, two, three ribbit jump in the air. Ready? One, two, three, ribbit. <laughs> wow, well done everyone. The only problem is the frog still had a lampshade for a head. Take your hands out to the side and bring your fingers up above your head. She still needed to practice. Hmm. She'd also managed to turn her pencils into snakes. 
Let's come into snake pose. Come into lie on your tummies, everyone, and take your hands underneath your shoulders. Now wiggle, wiggle, wiggle yourself all the way up into snake pose with a The only problem was the snakes still had pencil lead heads, so they made a right mess scribbling all over the walls, hmm. sitting back on your heels. Now everyone was getting rather excited because it was coming up to Halloween. Everyone apart from Ruby, who was having a really hard time at school. All of her friends wanted to go trick-or-treating and dress up as really horrible warty witches. Coming up to stand, everyone, and let's do our warty witch pose. Oh, maybe standing on one toe and making your mouth go all gummy and your fingers all craggy and maybe closing your eye and sticking out your tongue. Wee! Standing with her hands on her hips, Ruby didn't think this was at all fair. Not all witches are horrible like that. Some are rather beautiful, like my mum. She looks as graceful as a dancer when she rides on her broomstick. And she showed them with a dancer pose. Reaching your arm all the way up and taking your hand to the side. Now seeing if you can balance on one leg, whoop, try not to wobble, and hold your foot. Now kick, kick, kick your foot into your hand, lifting it up above your head. Yes, seeing if you can come into your dancer pose. Fantastic. And lowering yourself back down. Well done, everyone. Ruby's friends thought this was the funniest thing they'd heard all year and they rolled around on their backs like happy babies. Coming to lie on your back, everyone, and bring your knees into your armpits and hold on to your feet. And now let's laugh like a happy baby. <laughs> oh, Ruby. Ruby thinks she's a real witch. Well, she's just as horrible and ugly as a real witch. <gasps> Coming up to sit, everyone. Ruby was really rather upset by this and later on that evening she got onto her bed in her bedroom and she hugged her knees, feeling really sad. She cried to her mum, I wish I wasn't a witch, it's not fair, nobody likes witches. Now Ruby's mum tried to explain that actually being a witch is pretty cool and then she turned herself into a lovely nuzzly black cat. Coming into your cat pose, everyone. Onto your hands and your knees. Now, arcing your spine, looking into your tummy. Yes. And then dipping your belly down and wiggle waggling your tail to go meow. She sat back on her heels, opened her arms wide, and she gave her daughter Ruby the biggest cuddle ever. Wrapping your arms around. Oh, it'll be okay. And lowering your hands to your lap. Finally. It was Halloween night and everyone was very excited. The Broom family had the best decorations in the whole neighbourhood. They even had a whole group of skeletons dancing a jig on the front lawn. Oh, what's happening? The skeletons are here. Come on, everyone. Let's be skeletons dancing a jig. Let's stand up and dance. Here we go. was crazy. Well done everyone. There was also a giant spider sat on the lawn. Let's come into spider pose. Taking your legs nice and wide, bend your knees and bring your hands down in between your feet. Now tick a tick a tick your fingers round the back and to the outsides of your feet, shuffling in your legs, making yourself into your spider pose. Now this spider was playing its leg like a cello. Sitting on your bottoms, everyone, and bring one of your feet in. Take hold of the other foot and stretch it up as straight as it'll go. Now use your other arm for a bow and play your spider cello. <laughs> now, the kids from Ruby School thought that the Broom family decorations were incredibly real, especially as they approached the front door and it opened by itself. 
Let's come into door pose. Up onto two knees, everyone. And take your leg to the side. Reach your arm up high. And let's creak like a haunted door. They'd come to collect Ruby to go trick or treating down the street. But Ruby was up in her bedroom reading a book, sitting on your bottoms, joining the soles of your feet together and take your knees out to the side, flapping them like the pages of the book. She was also listening to music with her earbuds in her ears. A song all about the summer because she wanted to pretend it wasn't Halloween. Summertime, I love the summer, yeah. Sun and summer, ooh, 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 ooh. But Ruby's mum really thought that Ruby ought to go trick-or-treating with her friends. She was a real witch after all. So with a twitch of her nose, <coughs> Ruby was standing like a mountain by the door. Coming up to stand, everyone, in your mountain pose. Nice and strong, arms down by your side. Ruby was even holding one of those mini cauldrons to collect her treats with. <laughs> Now, before she left, Ruby's mum folded halfway forwards to whisper something into Ruby's ear. And then she stood up. Hmm, we wonder what on earth she could have said. Everything was going amazingly and they were collecting lots of treats in their little mini cauldrons. Coming into your cauldron pose, lying on your tummies, everyone, and bring your feet towards your bottom. Reach around to grab your ankles and breathe in to lift yourself up. Ready? Kicking your feet into your hands. Yes, well done, everyone. Now, then they got to Mr Snell's house, number five, and everything went downhill from there. Let's come into our house pose. Coming up to stand with your feet wide and your arms wide and your hands above your head. Now, Mr Snell really didn't like children. He liked to poke them with his walking stick if they came too close. Turning your foot to the side and your arms out wide. Lean over your leg and tilt yourself down, going poke, poke, poke. Then coming back up to stand, bring your toes forward and turn your other toes out to the other side. Lean out over your leg and tilt yourself down, going poke, poke, poke. Coming all the way up to stand, bringing your toes to the front. Now grab opposite elbows, because when they came a-calling, saying trick or treat, Mr Snell opened the mini window in his door, lifting up your arms above your head and showing me your best Mr Snell grumpy face. Ready? What do you want? Trick or treat? <laughs> I'll take the trick. You kids don't deserve any treats. You don't scare me. You're just a bunch of silly kids. Lowering your arms all the way down, everyone. The friends didn't know what to do and looked from side to side at each other. Who was going to do the trick? But Ruby knew what to do and she stepped forwards. She looked at Mr Snell. And she remembered the words her mother had said to her earlier, an old broom family spell. She muttered the words now. And she took a big deep breath in through her nose. And she blew Mr Snell a kiss. Ruby's friends were amazed because Mr Snell wasn't Mr. Snell anymore. Slowly lowering yourself all the way down, everyone. Mr. Snell had turned into a tiny little brown fluffy hamster. Coming into hamster pose. Onto your knees, everyone, and tuck yourself up into a little fluffy hamster ball. Squeak, 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 squeak. Sitting all the way up. Now Ruby went into a little squat position to talk to Mr Snell the hamster. Taking your feet wide and bending your knees deep and snuggling your arms in, bringing your hands to touch at your heart. Yes. Yes, Mr Snell, how do you feel about your trick? Are you happy being a hamster? Mr Snell begged Ruby. He said, sorry, 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 please turn him back into a man. And Ruby took pity. So she said her spell again. She took a big deep breath in through her nose and she blew Mr Snell the hamster a kiss. 
slowly rising, Mr Snell grew back up from a hamster to being a man. And up on his tiptoes, he scuttled into the kitchen to grab arms full of treats. Then he folded halfway forwards and he gave them out to all the children, saying, Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Ruby stood up. Now Ruby's friends had a newfound respect for Ruby and for witches. Perhaps they won't be so quick to laugh at someone for being different to them. Ruby felt proud for being just as she was, one of a kind, a witch, Ruby Broom. And that was the best feeling in the world. Oh, after all that trick or treating though, we have a little lie down. Let's have a lie down now on our backs with our legs out long and our arms down by our sides. Wow, what a great fun story. Trick or treating with a real life witch. Now Ruby was having a hard time because she was worried about what her friends thought about her. She wanted to be like them, to fit in and not be different when actually her differences were what makes her special. Just like all of us, each and every one of us is different and wonderful for those differences. We should celebrate our differences and we should be accepting of others when they're different to us. The world will be a much richer, more wonderful place for that. So breathe into exactly who you are Love yourself for being one of a kind, for being unique, for being you. And love others for being different, for being them. Slowly we wiggle our fingers and our toes. We bring our knees into our chest and we roll over onto our side, opening our eyes, pressing ourselves up to sit with our legs crossed and our hands together at our hearts. And we finish just the way we started with our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. Well done, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful Halloween and that was so much fun trick or treating with you. I'll see you again soon for another Cosmic Kids adventure. Welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy. Just copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now we always start in the same way and that's by sitting on our bottoms, crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our hearts and saying our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Three, namaste. There. Now, let's have a look through our cosmonoculars and find out who we're meeting today. Joining our thumbs and fingers together, we have a look through. Ooh, look at the colours. Look at the shapes. The patterns all going round and round. Ooh, can you see it? The picture? It's a... Oh, it's Fairy Floss. Oh, what's Fairy right. Floss doing? Oh, of course, look, she's doing the floss dance. Lowering our hands all the way down. How exciting. We're off to meet Fairy Floss, a real life fairy. Now, Fairy Floss lives in Pixie Patch, which is home to a community of magical folk who love nature and the simple things in life, mostly dancing. Let's come up to stand without touching our hands on the floor. Ready? Oop. Well done, everyone. Now, Fairy Floss, as you've already guessed, loves one dance in particular, the floss. Let's try it. We take our arms down in front of us and make our hands into fists. Now we count one to the side, two to the other side, and through, front and back. Let's do that again. One to the side, Two to the other side and through, front and back. And again, one, two, through 
And again. One, two, through. One, two, through. One, two, through. Yay, we've got the arms. Now let's try the hips. Let's bring our hands onto our waist and our hips go side to side. We can add a little bend of the knee as well to help. Yay! Now we're going to try and put the arms and the hips together. We're going to start slowly and build up speed. Taking our arms down, hands into fists. Now our arms go one way as our hips go the other. Here we go. One, two, through. And again, one, two, through. Yay, here we go. One, two, through. One, two, through. Let's try a little bit faster. Here we go. One, two, through. One, two, through. One, two, through. We're getting it. That's it. We're getting it. Keep going. And we are flossing. Fairy floss to do 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 fairy floss to do 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 fairy floss to do 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 fairy floss. Woohoo! Now every week, Fairy Floss arranges a big dance meetup at the brilliant Bubble Club. The Bubble Club is a place to dance, to laugh, and to drink milkshakes. And it's run by none other than Wonky, who is a worm, coming into our worm pose. We lie down on our tummies and we bring our hands under our shoulders and we wiggle, 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 wiggle all the way up like a worm. Now Wonky makes a mean milkshake. He's also got his own special dance move known as Wonky's Wiggle. Let's try. We sit back on our heels, then we slide our body through and we wiggle on up like a worm. And again, sit back on our heels, slide our body through and wiggle on up like a worm. Very good, everyone. Now working alongside Wonky is Des. Des is a carrot, a disco carrot. He's also a keen gardener, coming up to stand in our carrot pose. We bring our feet together and our arms down by our side. We go all the way around one way. Yeah! And all the way around the other. Yeah! Now Des has one job at the Bubble Club, and that is to turn on the great big giant glitter ball. That's it! Now, every week, Fairy Floss flies all over the neighbourhood like a bird, inviting everyone to the dance meet. Folding all the way forwards, hands come down, we lift and lower our arms as we fly like a bird. She never misses anyone out, even inviting Nicodemia the witch, who can't bear dancing. Rolling up to stand, coming into our witch pose. We stand on one leg, using our toe for a bit of balance. We make our fingers all craggy, lift up our elbows, maybe close one eye, and we stick out our tongue. Eeeh! All this dancing, making everyone feel good. If only there were a way I could make it stop. Fungus, where is my spell book? Fungus is a frog. Coming into our frog pose, we crouch all the way down, take our knees wide, and we use our fingers like little froggy finger pads for balance. Now, Fungus the frog has been servant to Nicodemia since he was a tiny tadpole. He hops all over the cottage looking for the spell book. After three, let's do a hop and a ribbit. Ready? One, two, three. Ribbit. And again, one, two, three. Ribbit. I found it, my lady. Just then, Fairy Floss arrives with their invitations for the dance meetup. Coming down onto our knees, Nicodemia opens the door. Taking our leg to the side, our arm up to the sky, we open the door going. She stares at Fairy Floss with her grumpy witch face. What do you want, Fairy? Not put off, Fairy Floss stands and smiles. Coming up to stand. Hello! Just popping round to offer you both an invitation to the dance meet at the Bubble Club tomorrow and to suggest some dance moves that could be fun to try. Nicodemia stares. 
unimpressed. Fairy Floss continues. Right now, I am loving the bunny bounce. Let's give that a try. You come all the way down, put your hands flat, stay high on your tiptoes and lift up your hips. Then you do a little hop. Ready? One, two, three. Hoppity, hoppity, hop. And again, one, two, three. Hoppity, hoppity, hop. No? OK, well, there's also the uh, washing machine move where you sit on your bottom with your legs crossed, crisscross your fingers, put them behind your head, and then you twist from side to side, saying, Wisha, washa, wisha, washa, wisha, washa, woo! Wisha, washa, wisha, washa, wisha, washa, woo! No? OK? Well, there's also my favourite dance move, the floss. Let's give that a go. You come up to stand, legs a little bit wide. Now your arms go the opposite way to your hips. Here we go. Fairy floss, do 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 do. Fairy floss, do 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 do. Fairy floss, do 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 do. Fairy floss. Nicodemia can't bear any more, and she slams the door in Fairy Floss's face, coming down onto our knees, leg to the side, arm to the sky, and. Salam! It's time to put an end to all this dancing once and for all. That night, Nicodemia rides on her broomstick, coming into our broomstick pose. We lie on our tummies, our arms down by our sides. We lift up our chest, lift up our feet, and we fly, going whoosh through the night sky, straight for the bubble club. When she arrives, Nicodemia turns herself magically into a cat, coming into our cat pose. Up onto our hands and knees, we tuck our toes and we arch our back, looking into our tummy. Then we dip our tummy down and we wiggle waggle our tail, saying, Meow! Quietly, she slips in through the cat flap, reaching in with one paw, reaching in with two. Reaching in with three paws, reaching in with four. Then she rolls herself back up to her normal witchy self, walking your hands all the way back and rolling up to stand, keeping your knees bent, head to come up last. Then she takes out her wand and she points it straight up at the giant glitter ball. Stepping one foot forward, one foot back, bending into our front knee, stretching our top arm all the way up, making our finger a point like we're holding a wand. Then she incants her spell. She turns and she does it on the other side, turning to face the other way, bending into our front knee, reaching our arm all the way up. She incants her spell again. <laughs> now, when they all start dancing and their precious glitter ball begins to spin, they will all turn to stone. <laughs> and with that, she disappears in a puff of smoke, coming all the way down to crouch. After three, big jump and a puff. One, two, three. The next day is the dance meet. The music starts and the dancing begins. It's led by Fairy Floss doing her favourite dance, the floss. Here we go, everyone. Yeah, give it some floss, everyone. She does some bunny bouncing. Ready to hop. Here we go. Hop. And again. Hop. Last time. Hop. Coming all the way up. Washing machine. And a knee cross. Wonky is in the fridge getting the milkshakes ready. So Des climbs the ladder, ready to switch on the glitter ball. Here he goes. Yeah, up I go. Yeah, up I go. Yeah, up I go. 
Yeah, up they go. He turns to the side, folds his little carrot body in half, and he presses go on the big green go button. Rolling up to stand, the glitter ball begins to spin, taking our legs wide, arms wide, and we spin. As soon as it does, Nicodemia's spell is activated. Everyone freezes because everyone has turned to stone. Jump your feet together, hold on to your face. Des the disco carrot is horrified. Oh no! And then he spots someone hopping out of the bubble club. <gasps> it's Fungus, the frog, coming into our frog pose, crouching all the way down. Knees come wide, balancing with our froggy fingertips. After three, let's do a hop and a ribbit. One, two, three. Ribbit. And again, one, two, three. Ribbit. Wonky the worm comes out of the fridge and he sees him too. <gasps> coming into our wonky the worm pose. Lying on our tummies, hands under our shoulders, wiggle, 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 wiggle all the way up. Now we know who's behind this, Des. It was Nicodemia. We've got to find out how to break the spell. And so Wonky and Des go to Nicodemia's cottage, coming to sit on our heels. When they arrive, Wonky and Des peep in through the window using their cosmonoculars, joining our thumbs and fingers together. Have a look through. <gasps> there she is, lying on the couch. Coming to lie down, everyone. Legs wide, arms wide. She's asleep and she's snoring loudly, like a witch. <laughs> <laughs> In the corner, in his frog basket, is Fungus, the frog. He's also lying asleep, but with his legs in the air, lifting our legs up, holding onto the soles of our feet. He's also snoring loudly, but like a frog. Ribbit. Ribbit. Des keeps a lookout and does a bit of weeding in the garden while Wonky wiggles inside bravely. Coming onto our tummies, everyone. Hands under our shoulders. Let's wiggle in. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. He finds Nicodemia's spell book coming into our book pose, sitting on our bottoms, knees bent, feet flat, hands on our knees. The book is still open, lowering our knees down to the side. The page is titled, How to Stop Dancing. <gasps> Wonky reads down the spell, and at the bottom is a note that says how to break this spell. It reads, find as many people not under the spell to dance, dance, dance until they hear a bell. When the spell is broken, a new curse shall begin for the one who cast it to forever dance like a chicken. Chicken, it says chicken. So, so this means when the spell is broken, Nicodemia will forever dance like a chicken. Well, that is something. Wonky quietly, silently wiggles out, trying not to disturb Nicodemia and Fungus. Coming back onto our tummies, hands under our shoulders, Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Back at the bubble club, Wonky and Des start phoning round everyone they know. Sitting on our bottoms, with our legs out long in front of us, they pick up the telephone, lifting up one of our feet and dialing the number. Beep, boop, 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 beep, boop, 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 beep, beep, boop, boop, beep, beep, beep. Oh, hi, Bob. Yeah, it's Wonky and Des here from the bubble club. How are you? Oh, good. How are all the gnomes? Yeah, they all OK? Excellent. Look, we've got a favour to ask. Would you mind gathering as many gnomes as you can? Yeah, all your gnome friends. Bring them to the bubble club because we need you to dance. Yeah, we've got to break this spell. Nicodemia, she's turned everyone to stone. I know, it's awful. Oh, you'll come? Yeah? And you'll bring them all? Oh, brilliant. You're a star, Bob. We'll see you in a minute. OK, bye. They put the phone down and the next thing we know, Telephone is ringing. Bring, 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 bring. Let's answer it. We pick up the phone. Hello, Cosmic Kids here. How can I help you? 
Oh, hi, Wonky. Hi, Des. Yeah, we heard all about it. Dreadful business. Nicodemia turning everyone to stone. Awful. Yeah, we can do that. We can come to the bubble club. Yeah, we can dance. Yeah, Cosmic Kids are awesome at dancing. Easy. Yeah, OK, we'll be there in a minute. All right, Wonky. Bye. Oh, yeah, yeah, love you too, Des. OK, bye. Bye. We put the phone down and we get ourselves down to the bubble club. Coming up to stand, everyone. When we get there, the place is packed full of people and thousands of gnomes. It's time to unfreeze our frozen friends and start the dancing. Wonky cues the music and the dancing begins. We dance in slow motion, starting with a slow motion floss dance. Are we ready? Arms down, opposite way with arms and hips. Here we go, ready? washing machine. Slow-mo knee cross. Slow-mo bunny bounce. a ginormous hug, reaching our arms wide, wrapping us up. Oh, you've done it, Cosmic Kids. You saved us with a dance. All of a sudden, there is a puff of green smoke coming all the way down to Crouch. After three, let's do a big jump and a puff. One, two, three. <laughs> Appearing before us in the mist is Nicodemia, the witch. Coming up to stand in our witch pose. Onto one leg, craggy fingers lifting our elbows, closing our eye and sticking out our tongue. Oh. Everyone stops as still as mountains to stare, standing with our feet hip distance apart, arms down by our sides, shocked to see her here for the first time. But as the music starts again, Nicodemia begins to dance unlike anyone could ever have imagined. Just like a chicken. She puts her hands on her hips and she clucks her wings. She jigs her head forward and back. She even makes a comb on her head and a little tail feather with her hand and she kicks her legs up high to the side. Nicodemia is having fun. She is loving the dance. And so is everyone else as we all join in dancing together. As we look around, we take a moment to step back. And we take this moment to lie ourselves all the way down on the ground. We stretch our legs long and our arms long and we let our bodies rest, allowing our breath to come back to normal. Wow. It's amazing just to notice how you feel in your body after you've been dancing. 
You feel so alive, so strong, so free. Dancing is like a magic power that can transform the way you feel. Whenever you feel sad or worried or cold, if you dance, you transform your body. You make yourself feel good. It's a powerful thing like that. And when we dance together, when we dance with others, something very special happens. We create an amazing bond, a bond of trust, a connection. And when we trust those around us enough to dance freely, when we feel that safe, we are stronger than ever. We are open, we are free. We are able to learn and ready to listen, ready to receive. Dance whenever you can. And when you get a moment to share dance with someone else, do it. You will only grow. Slowly now we begin to wiggle our fingers and wiggle our toes. We hug our knees into our chest, giving them a nice big squeeze. And then we roll onto our side, opening our eyes to press ourselves up to sit. We cross our legs and we bring our hands together at our hearts. And we finish just the way we started with our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. Wow, well done everyone. That was amazing. You were brilliant at dancing. Thank you so, so much. I hope you enjoyed the Fairy Floss adventure and I hope to see you again soon for another Cosmic Kids adventure. Bye-bye. This story is all about a witch. Let's come up to stand and do our witch pose. We come up onto one toe, we make our fingers all long and witchy and we do our witchy face. We reach all the way up with a whoosh. Wow. We tuck our toes and press our hips up to the sky. The little dog has the hat and he's very happy to have found it. He wags his tail, lifting our leg all the way up to give it a wiggle waggle around. Oh, behind her, the witch hears a very loud and scary roar. It's a dragon coming into dragon pose. Stepping one foot forward, one foot back, down onto one knee. We crisscross our thumbs and we take them up above our head. The dragon is breathing fire as he roars. Let's stick out our tongue and do that. She begins to move as she mutters a spell under her breath. Iggity, ziggity, zaggity, zoom! A truly magnificent broom. Let's do our super strong broomstick plank pose again. Coming onto our hands and knees, we step one foot back and the other foot back. Wow, how cool is this? Then with a tap of her wand, lifting up one foot, tap, tap, whoosh, they were gone. Kindness spreads kindness. So let's do something now. Let's close our eyes here and think of somebody in our minds and let's smile, fill our hearts with kindness and send that someone a very kind, happy wish. Slowly now, we begin to wake up, wiggling our toes and wiggling our fingers. We hug our knees into our chest. Joining our thumbs and fingers together, have a look through. Ooh, look at that. All spinning around, the colours, the shapes. Ooh, can you see the picture? It's a spider. It's Spot the spider. Now let's begin with a spider pose. We come up to stand and we take our feet a little bit wider. 
Now we bend our knees and bring our hands in between our feet. Now we take them round the back, going ticka, 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 ticka to the outsides, walking our feet all the way in as we sit on the tops of our arms, maybe joining our big toes together in our spider pose. Very good. Taking our hands in front of us and using our fingers to play piano. Very good. After lots and lots of practice, Spot can play lots of tunes rather skillfully. Joining the soles of our feet together, dropping our knees out to the side, we fold forwards. Dear Spot, how wonderful it is you have a talent for playing my beautiful piano. Well, we shall be delighted to have you play at my soiree this Saturday when my dear cousin, the Queen, shall be coming to stay. The Queen? The very idea of anyone watching, let alone the Queen, sends poor shy Spot into a flustered tangle. Let's do our tangly eagle pose. We come They're talking about him. Oh, well, we can't wait for this, can we? No, a spider virtuoso. What a treat this will be. The clock strikes five, standing tall. It's time for Spot to perform. As calmly as he can, he climbs up the side of the piano. Up I go, up I go, up I, up I, up I go. Then he crosses his legs and sits himself down, positioning himself at the keys. A hush falls over the audience and all Spot can hear is the sound of his breath as he inhales and exhales. He quietly smiles to himself as he remembers the advice of Mozart the cat and Bach the dog. Play what you've practiced. Enjoy the music. Now, having to perform can make us all feel nervous. And practice isn't always easy. We have to make lots of mistakes so that we learn. It can feel frustrating, but when we stick with it, when we're kind to ourselves, we forgive our mistakes, we become our best selves. We can put a lot of pressure on ourselves to be perfect, but really there is no such thing. We're all just doing our best. And really, that is enough. Super Yoga!
What's happening? The skeletons are here. Come on, everyone. Let's be skeletons dancing a jig. Let's stand up and dance. Here we go. Sticking out your tongue, way and dance. Here we go. Ribbit, ribbit. What do you want? Trick or treat? <laughs> I'll take the trick. And dance! Here we go! Ribbit! Ribbit! Are you happy being a hamster? And dance! Here we go!
Wow! Whoa! That was crazy! Well done, everyone! 